Hey everyone, what's up? It's Kid Barry Ignite. I'm here with another episode of 5 Tips and Tricks with Irelio. I think I have more than 5 this time, but I just had to update everything because the old guide was outdated. Before we begin, I want you to stick around until the very end because there's going to be a very important giveaway to one lucky winner. We're going to be calling our first tip Level 1 Cheese. And basically, the name of the tip explains what it really is. It's level one cheese. This works in every single top laner. And basically what you want to do is queue the first three minions, and then you want to apply the last stack of your queue on a champion, and you want to apply that when your conqueror is up, and then you want to auto attack and move up. Auto attack and move up. Auto attack and move up. Your auto attack range is extremely high, and if you kite correctly, you should out damage every single top laner, and you wouldn't be getting auto attack as much, because you have the highest attack speed at level 1 and the highest auto attack range. So tip number 1, abuse the level 1 on Irelia and abuse it correctly. And you are bound to either bully the enemy laner out of lane or even get first blood or apply lane dominance and get lane priority. The old Irelia was never able to do this so it's pretty cool that the new Irelia has something unique like this. The next trick is super duper cool. Um, not many people know this but Irelia's E can be cast in CC and Irelia's W can be cast in CC as well. I'm pretty sure it's common knowledge that Irelia's W cannot be disturbed by CC. Uh, obviously it can't be cast by CC, I said that wrong. But Irelia's E can be cast in the middle of CC. And um, it's really unique and no other ability in the game can do this. So I guess this is super fucking cool and just unique to Irelia I guess. But yeah, so if you're in the middle of a suppression, you can get out of the suppression by casting your E. As long as you've cast the first part of your E already. So if you have a, your first part of your E lying around, and in the next three to four seconds before your next E goes off, you get suppressed or you get knocked up, or any form of CC, even a polymorph, like anything in the game, even the silence, you're still able to cast the second part of your E. So you can peel off suppressions and you can do things while you're CC'd as Irelia if you want to cast your W. So for example, let's say you're up against the Yasuo. And you know he's just about to ult you. So you can go ahead and place the first part of your E and cast your W to negate his ult damage. And while he's in ult form, he can't move. So you can cast a free E on him. And then after you get out of the ult, you can Q him, follow up with your ult, and then kill him. If you're up against a Warwick, same thing applies. You know he's going to ult you. If you can read that, that's super cool. You can place one E down wherever you like. And then as he's stationary ulting you, you can use the next part of your E. Okay, so the next tip is also super cool and unique to Irelia. Now, as we all know, Irelia is like the dash queen. She's the queen of mobility and it's awesome that they kept her mobility the way it is. And um, basically, this tip requires you to have a Tiamat to be the most impactful, but it could still be impactful without a Tiamat. And it's just simply auto attacking and then queuing minions in between auto attacks as animation counseling. And what this does for you is, as you're queuing minions, you're constantly healing. Queuing a minion only costs you 20 mana. So let's say you're up against a Yasuo, a Jax, whatever the enemy top laner is, or you're in the middle of a duel. It's important that you queue minions so you can dodge enemy skill shots, like a Fiora W, or maybe a Jax stun, a Yasuo, a Tornado, or a Q. So you want to queue around as much as possible. And what it does is it applies your team at damage, it gives you the healing for your Q, and if you have any lifesteal in your build, it gives you that healing as well. And um, it's just super important that you cast your Q in the middle of auto attacks so you can win trades even harder and you can stay healthy between trades. Uh, if, you have, if you fight Irelia under a huge minion wave, you're probably going to lose because she's going to heal around two to 300 HP. And yeah, you should just be utilizing that to the best of your ability and you should always be cautious and not waste your Q on stupid things. So always stay calm and in between auto attacks, don't forget to just Q minions and don't forget that your Q does double damage to minions. The next tip is going to be more of a guide on what to take on Irelia in the runes. So what you want to be taking is Conqueror 100% of the time. Always take Conqueror without a doubt. Then you want to take uh, Triumph and then you want to take Alacrity and then you want to take Coupe de Gras. And... It's really important that you take this setup because this is the strongest setup on Irelia right now. And as for your secondary, you want to take Nullifying Orb into Transcendence, into 10% CDR scaling, into Adaptive AD, and then 5 Armor. Now, I'm going to explain to you why this works. Well, as for the Conqueror tree, it's pretty explanatory. Bruisers take Conqueror and it's just 
the best mastery on bruisers. It's extremely strong on bruisers. It gives them true damage and they're tanky. And as for this, pretty self-explanatory too. It's the best, this is the best, and this is just the best. Like everyone knows that this is the best. <laughs> but this is where it gets confusing and people start to argue and be like, no, nullifying orb is actually not that good or transcendence is not that good. But um, you could take domination or resolve and inspiration but the reason why this is the most consistent and powerful page is because it gives you defense and offense at the same time it's a lot of utility that you don't get in other kits you don't need the extra damage from domination because i really doesn't need that she already has enough damage in her kit what she needs is an offensive defense essentially because she's an all-in champion so nullifying orb you can never go wrong with that it's really self expel it's really self-explanatory if they have ap damage then this is your source of defense against that ap damage and it will save you from a lot of things like maybe a carthus ult early on or just stuff that you don't expect it to save you from it's really 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 useful and it's basically free the reason why you want to take it is because you're going to get five armor but you don't really get five magic resist at the same time so early on this is going to make up for the fact that you don't have any magic resist. A nullifying orb instead of magic resist is basically going to resemble the same thing. And as for transcendence, transcendence is going to help you. It's, it's essentially 10% CDR. And when you overcap on CDR, you still get bonus AD, meaning you can scale infinitely when you buy CDR. And there's no wrong stealing your mid laner's blue buff, things like that. Or if you overcap on CDR later on, uh, which you shouldn't, but if you do, then there's no problem because Irelia has has been forced into a one-dimensional state where she's supposed to go Trinity Force into Titanic almost all the time. Having 10% CDR is very important because it's gonna go along with the 10% CDR in your mastery over here. And what this will do is it will give you 40% CDR around. 12 to 13 minutes sometimes it's really really powerful it may not give you exactly 40 percent cdr but around 35 36 percent which is kind of equivalent to 40 and then if you get a blue buff then you get bonus ad as well so this is truly the most consistent and best irelia tree if you're learning irelia and if you're really good at irelia at the same time it's just too powerful to miss out on it is definitely the most efficient thing you can get on irelia and Assuming you're going to win lane on Irelia, this will reward you the most. If you're going to go even on lane, this will still reward you quite well. Just because as a bruiser, you don't get many items that give you CDR. So I cannot emphasize how important that you go this page over any other page in the game. Alright, before we go on to our next tip, uh, I'd like to explain a few things. Uh, one being, you should be very careful of specific matchups on Irelia. And these matchups are as follows. You should be careful of the Trinimir matchup, the Fiora matchup, and the Jax matchup. Uh, these are really, really, really shitty matchups for Irelia right now because Irelia's W does really not that much against those champions, and it's just really frustrating to play against them because you could be super duper ahead and they'll still one shot you after one or two items despite the lead that you've gotten. So, my biggest advice for anyone that has to go through those matchups is to really just dodge because they're very team dependent matchups and you don't really want to play uh, around how good your team is you want to play around how good your ability as a solo queue player is so if you ever get fiora trinomir or Jax on the enemy team the chances of you winning that game are going to decrease simply because they can outdo you no matter how well you play unfortunately just because of how one dynamic the game is at the moment so yeah Make sure you dodge those two, three matchups. Alright, so for the next tip, I'm going to teach you how to duel with Irelia and to how to teamfight with her. So out in the open or even a closed area, as Irelia, your job is to Q in and then ult and then fully charge your W and then either stun or auto attack once and your Q is going to come back up. Due to the build path that I explained to you, your Q is going to be on a low cooldown. But you never engage because you have a lot of stacks, you engage to create stacks. The reason you want to queue and then apply the stats is because the stacks last for 5 seconds and your queue is going to be around 4.8 seconds. So if you do the math, you should have more than enough time to utilize the stacks regardless of engaging with Q and you're not going to be missing out on much. But if you ult or you stun before you go in, there's a chance that you might miss and it's too inconsistent. So it's very important that you engage every single all-in, every single teamfight, Every single duel, 
with your Q instead of anything else. But that is my way of playing her. A lot of others will disagree, but I truly feel like this is the best way to do things. Okay, so for our next tip, it's a split pushing tip and it's super duper cool. So how Irelia's old W used to work is as soon as you activate it, it was able to reset your passive stacks and it allowed you to keep the attack speed steroid while you're split pushing and taking down towers. But unfortunately, they nerfed it and you cannot do that any longer. So there's no point resetting your passive with your W. So instead, what you're going to be able to do now is while you're split pushing, you should not finish off the entire wave that you're pushing in if you're under the enemy tower and instead use your abilities to create four stacks and every single time your stacks are about to expire renew your stacks by queuing a minion and finishing it off therefore you have an infinite source of supply to keep on renewing your stacks while you're splitting but in order to do this make sure that the minions are aggroing you and your minions are not aggroing the minion the minions that are aggro okay so for our final tip actually it's going to be two tips in one and what's going to happen is i'm going to teach you how to combo with irelia and I'm going to teach you how to queue properly with Irelia. So, uh, first off, I'm going to start with how to queue properly on Irelia. Uh, this is a tip with, this is a tip that you were able to apply with old Irelia just as much as new Irelia. And I'm kind of repeating myself from the old video, but I just wanted to bring it back to refresh your memory and to just still keep it at the back of your mind. Uh, use your queue on Irelia to create distance from people with insane skill shots that will burst you for your entire HP bar or give you crippling depression. So for example, the Jax stun. In the early game, Jax's stun is the reason why he beats Irelia because this stun actually does a lot more damage than any other ability in his kit. So basically what he's going to do is he's going to queue onto you and then he's going to charge his stun and then the minions around you are going to start auto attacking him and then the more auto attack dodges he has, the more damage it's going to do. And then you're going to W it like a fucking pleb and it's going to take out half your HP because he tried to W a jack stun. And then he's just going to molest you and completely destroy you and you're going to fucking rage quit because it's bullshit. So what you need to do in a matchup like that is you have to be ready for him to stun you and create distance between you and him by queuing to a minion and finishing off the minion and then re-engaging on the Jax and one-shotting him because he has no damage other than his counter-strike. Or against Fiora, her W can give you some serious crippling depression, and it's really important that you dodge her W by queuing onto a nearby minion. So always be prepared and set up that minion to dodge her W. Flash out of it if you have to, but I don't take flash, I take barrier, so it encourages me to queue onto minions, okay? So I'm gonna be taking queuing minions to dodge crippling depression, and to dodge major abilities that champions have. So if skill shots are coming right your way, be ready to dodge them by queuing to minions. So always walk in zigzags away from minions. That way, when you queue to that minion, it's impactful and it actually helps you dodge a skill shot. So that way, there's actually no way you can get hit by skill shots because let's say you, they're queuing to, the, they're using their skill shot on the minion wave, then you don't have to queue to the minion. It's kind of mind games. You don't have to get that far, but it's important that I bring that tip back up uh, save your life by queuing a minion, and it's easily done because you have Sheen later on in the game, it gets easy, but in in the beginning, it gets kind of hard. So yeah, I just wanted to refresh that tip. It's not really a new tip, but I wanted to go over it again. Now, as for our final tip, it's going to be how to combo with Irelia, and I'm going to teach you the simple combo. I'm sure there's a million ways to combo with Irelia, but this is the most efficient way to combo, and if you can master this way, then you don't have to worry about all the other ways because they're just fancy and they don't need to be implied, okay? So the way you can combo with Irelia is to engage with your ult and then Q and then stun. Or you can engage with your ult and then put your first char charge of your stun and then Q and then put your second charge after you Q. But I prefer you ult, you Q, then you stun, then you Q again. The reason why this works is because you can do this super fast in around one to two seconds and when you hit your ult the target is just essentially crippled like they cannot move it's essentially like a snare they're stunned they're slowed for so fucking long that your your stun cannot miss if you miss your stun on a target that is literally ulted by an irelia or by your ult like you have some serious autism there's no way you can miss your stun on Irelia after landing your ult. So it's important to engage with your ult, then Q, then stun, and then Q. That's the tip. That's literally a tip. If you can do this, you can kill any top laner that you've gone even within lane after you've achieved your power spikes, which most of the time is going to be Tiamat Triforce. 
And that is all the tips I have for you today. As I already stated, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. Oh, this is a unique... This is a very unique giveaway because I don't think any other YouTuber has done this. But personally, I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm going to be completely honest. Uh, I give up on fapping and touching myself because it just keeps undermining me how I'm never going to get laid my whole life. I'm going to stay a virgin forever. So I'm giving away my porno membership to one lucky viewer. And in order to receive it, you must be the 69th comment in on this video. And you will get my porno membership. I hope you enjoy it and I hope you can do great things with it because it's clearly not for me. Thanks for listening. Have a good day. Good luck in solo queue and best of luck out there.